Hello everyone. Welcome to this live from One Love. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy February. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are about to start a live. Um, hi with a few of our fellows from the Allstate Foundation Film Fellowship. So I am going to wait for Spencer and Isaiah to join and then bring them on to talk all things film fellowship, the inspiration behind them creating their new films for One Love. Can't wait to have them join us and for all of y'all to get to hear from them today. Welcome to everyone who has joined already. I'm going to go ahead, hi, and have Spencer and Isaiah click that join live button so I can accept their request. Spencer. Okay, Spencer, I've accepted your request, so hopefully you're able to join. Hey. <laughs> there you are. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. It's Monday. Um, it's Valentine's Day, so that's like a double whammy. Yeah. But we're here. We're here. I'm excited. I'm very excited to have you and just waiting for mm. you to join us as well. Um, my people are sweet. What's up, Max? Seabass? Mm. I love, I love it. Shout out to them. <sighs> We got our star Jasper in the house. It's and here is Isaiah. Join as well. Hello. What's good? What's good? What's up, Isaiah? Pretty good. How are y'all doing? Doing great. Doing well. Good, good. So I, I'm just now realizing there's a there's gonna be quite a delay on my side. So I, I, I like heard you guys. I saw your mouth move, and then I heard you like three seconds after. So, <laughs> okay, we we will figure it out. We will make sure that you are given time to answer all of the questions. But I want to go ahead and get started since we are just after three o'clock over here on the East Coast. I know both of y'all are joining from closer to the West Coast. Um, so welcome and welcome to everyone who is joining from wherever you are. So today we are excited to feature directors from the Allstate Foundation Film Fellowship and Film Festival, which if you haven't heard, is going on during the entire month of February for us over here at One Love. Um, so for the last year, year and a half or so, One Love has teamed up with the Allstate Foundation, um, really with just one goal in mind, to empower young LGBTQ plus and filmmakers of color to create new films for One Love's library content. Um, content library. And so after a year of exceptionally hard work, we have our fellows final films in hand and are ready to show those um, to the world. So welcome again, Isaiah and Spencer, two of our five fellows through this film fellowship. We'd love to just give y'all an opportunity to introduce yourselves. Do uh, you want to go first? Sure, I'll go first. Um, hi, my name is Spencer. Um, Calling in from San Francisco, California. I am 22 years old, and I am the director of Fight Night. Awesome. Um, hello, uh, I'm Isaiah, uh, coming in from Denver, Colorado, and I am the director and writer of Road Trip. Welcome to you both, and I will introduce myself as well. My name is Annie Forrest. I am the director of program growth here at One Love and have had the honor of being a co-lead on this project from One Love Side of Things. So um, have gotten to know Spencer and Isaiah along the way. To kick us off, tell me about your film project, each of you. What is your film? You shared the names of it. Tell us a little bit more about it and what was the inspiration behind it? Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I guess I'll jump in. Um, so um, Road Trip, yeah. Uh, the inspiration behind Road Trip was actually kind of based off of a, a trip I took with my friend uh, like a couple years ago. Uh, for him, he was going through a really nasty breakup, kind of like the same of uh, Aladi, my main character. And um, 
during the whole trip, we were kind of just avoiding talking about it just because we mm. didn't know, or specifically, I didn't even know how to like check on him just to be like, hey, are you feeling all right? Because you're yeah. acting weird and you're being a jerk, but I don't know if it's because, you know, another reason or because you're dealing with this breakup. But um, inevitably, when I did try to like push him on it and talk about it, it didn't really go well. We didn't resolve it like, you know, I had my characters do. And our friendship didn't really survive that, actually. So, mm-hmm. like, uh, it was kind of just like a, if I could redo that moment, here's how it would have gone in my head if we would have, like, you know, talked about our feelings or at least, like, you know, cried about something and talked about how we were feeling. But, you know, so that's the inspiration for that. And, yeah, made me write this thing and kind wow. of a hopeful, you know, thing of how I wish it would have gone. Mm-hmm. I love that reflecting back on a relationship, a friendship that you've had and saying, here's a way that maybe we could have handled it differently and the friendship could have Absolutely. gone in a different direction. Um, Spencer, tell us about the inspiration behind Fight Night. Was that something that was based on personal experience or not or whatever you want to share? Yeah, I mean, I, when I first heard about the opportunity to write for the fellowship, um, it was actually so uh, so crazy because this had been a story that I've been setting on for a while now, um, very much mm-hmm. um, like, a, like a story from when I grew up and just a general feeling and angst of um, being, high, being in high school. And <clears throat> I think, you know, the story is about a lot of things. It's about masculinity. It's about um, finding your place in the world. But I think mostly it's based around um, just this idea, you know, I feel like we all grow up, um, you know, you can have someone that you call your best friends and then, mm-hmm grow up things change and you go different directions there's not always a conversation about what why fell apart but um just to me it's this really weird concept of how there's someone walking around um on this planet who just like knows like where you're from who your parents are Mm -hmm. and essentially they carry a piece of you like wherever they go and this idea of what happened to people joined up and uh at a point in their lives when they're both so much has changed and what would happen yeah i love that a lot um it sounds like for both of you there are these elements of your personal lives that had a big bearing on why you wrote the the script the way that you did and brought these films to life which are so incredible and we'll share with everyone who's joining how you can view both isaiah's um and spencer's films at the end so just to talk a little bit about what the filmmaking process is like um, one love makes a lot of films but we're not always involved in that process tell us what a typical day was like behind the scenes for y'all as um the creators of these films what do you miss the most about filming now that you're a few months out from it yeah i mean i guess i can start um i would say even before you get onto set there's much great into pre-production like Mm -hmm. that's honestly all of it i mean we only shot three or four days but the amount of planning had to be like months so and the, and that the planning is that's the most that for me that was the most stressful part because there's so many things you got to work with like permits, um, mm-hmm. and you, you got permits. It's, it's like I just want to pull up my camera and start shooting here, but I don't work like that. There's laws. In place. I had to work with the city of LA to make sure that I was able to shoot in the locations I wanted to shoot at. Mm-hmm. Um, sure, everyone is like tuned in. The actors, the crew everyone's you know showing up on time that's the most stressful part especially shooting during covid so many there were so many uh we yeah. had to make sure we tested and on set so the day we got on set to me that's the easy part because that was like just that's my favorite part about filmmaking that was just um being able to, that's my favorite part because yeah. that for so long with these these really talented interesting individuals that you may not really know that well but mm-hmm. after all this time and problem solving together and eating you know meals together you really get to know these people and um they bring their own talents to the table and my film when it came out well i don't even like saying my film our film when it came out um to the end product it's not how i imagined it but in the best Mm -hmm. possible because all that collaboration and just different experiences perspectives coming in to create this product to me that's that's my favorite part it's just like the people 
absolutely like everything everything you said to an absolute <laughs> t like literally even down to the permits and even down to the location down to the working with the people like absolutely that was like man um but um yeah like especially with like uh our project it was like uh, we had to film it twice because we just you know sometimes cameras want to do what cameras got to do but other times they don't like you so like i think i learned so much on this project oh my goodness i learned i i like so that the the amount of times i cried over the times something didn't go right mm -hmm. or the amount of times that i had to like go back to like uh like anyone from one love and say hey so this happened god and like you know so the i it was oh man it's the most stressful thing but i think what made it all so worth it was i would have never met any of these people if i wouldn't yeah. have done this like i would have never worked with the actors who were awesome like man they were so great and even my producer who was so awesome like i was just so grateful to like be working with these people and at the end of the day even though literally everything went wrong that could have gone wrong we still got something out of it and at the end of the day we were like hey at least we learned this too so it was like mm -hmm. like 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 spencer said eating with them and like sitting down and like rushing to wait with them and just like trying not to like you know uh step on everyone's shoes but also like creating this thing together was like such a kind of not not i won't say intense but it was a very um i guess like it was very emotional for a lot of reasons because everyone wanted yeah. to be a part of it so badly and everyone wanted to work together and then like communicating with everyone and like doing all these things and then like on the second day of sh or the, the second time of the second day we were shooting um everybody just like was awesome like we knew how to communicate with each other mm -hmm. we knew we like I, I there was a time i looked at my dp jose and i was just like oh you're hungry huh like he was like yeah and he was like yes <laughs> man and like put the camera down and like like got him like some crackers and it was so funny it was just like by that by the you know fourth times the charm we all just kind of like knew each other so intimately that we could just on to the next one on to the next one on to the next one and like i would wow. like it was just lovely to like work with these people and kind of like get a feel for everyone and then it just all translated you know yeah it all came together and i have to say for both of your films you would never know that all of those wild things happened behind the scenes that there were struggles with permits or that isaiah you had issues with filming and getting all of your um cameras in order like the the finished product for both of those films are so amazing that for us as audience viewers we would never know oh spencer yeah I, you I, have I, something to add yeah just all those little moments man but uh, isaiah i i because i heard about what happened with the with the camera I, how i want i'm just curious if that would be, like my whole being would have just shattered like i would have fallen apart so i'm just wondering like what did you learn about yourself and how did you get through that because it's that was like to me that was one of the greatest adversities i'd I, I don't know if you know how I would handle that. Man, I, I think I'm, I'm just grateful for people. Um, like, I'm, my personality alone is mm -hmm. I will get it done whether it's sleet, snow, or tornado. So I, <laughs> I will, no matter what happens, I'm going to get the shot. And with this project where things literally were combating me and every, literally, like, even with permits, cameras, everything was, like, like just difficult to where it isn't usually difficult but um the way i handled it was like i had to like manage my emotions very very closely because uh now that like you know yeah my film's about crying so like i so like you know um i have to be it's careful part of it like, right yeah that's like you know what i mean like my whole message is men to cry so like um i had to like not only manage my emotions but how they came off towards the crew because if your director like after like at the end of the day and you're looking at your shots and you see the you know the premiere error uh error encoding error and you're just like and you like your whole inside caves in and you just break down everyone's like well this was a wash and i tried not to do that so many times like i had to like i walked to my car five times just to literally just to sit 
and Mm -hmm. not do anything because like there were moments where I was like oh man yeah I've failed like I'm a failure like the 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 uh uh, what is it? The imposter syndrome and the uh, mm. I'm not meant to be mm-hmm. here was so strong when that happened. So uh, I'm grateful for everyone because uh, my friends and my crew, they were like, hey, let's just use our cameras. Let's just get this done. Like we shot it all on like a Sony A7R3. And we were like, yeah, we have these things. We can use what we have and create something at least. And it was like, okay. You're absolutely right. And, and you did. Actually, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I'm grateful we did. And I'm grateful I learned so much. So, like, honestly, like, yeah. it was just the the learning that I'm grateful mm. for. Like, if I got, if I'm not saying I didn't get anything else, but if I didn't get anything else from this experience, absolutely learning. I, like, I am, I will never do that again. <laughs> like, yeah. that's, that's what I've learned. Yeah. I love that. Well, grateful for all that you learned, Isaiah, and you were definitely meant to be part of this project. I mean, that is absolutely clear from our end, from the very first time that we read your application, um, and Spencer, you as well. It was so clear to us from One Love's point of view that you all really understood what this, um, what this fellowship was all about, and uh, we wanted to, you know, help bring those stories to life. So uh, just to transition us a little bit, this month is obviously February. It is Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. It is a month of love. Today is Valentine's Day, but it is also Black History Month. Um, and so one of the reasons that we partnered with the Allstate Foundation was to very intentionally uplift um, voices that aren't always centered, um, those of, of queer and filmmakers of color. And so just to have a question um, for you, Isaiah, you know, Black History Month is a time when we do often highlight incredible leaders, change makers um, on social media and other places. What does Black excellence mean to you um, as a filmmaker or in your life generally? Um, well, they kind of mean two different things in those in those rights for me. Uh, yeah. cre- creatively, uh, Black excellence is just shining a light that's your own because uh, I know like for since media was ever a thing uh Mm -hmm. people of color never really had control of their own narrative like they didn't make their own movies they didn't write about themselves or they just couldn't so it was there was a point where it's literally illegal to to do that which is Mm -hmm. wild to me but um what that means creatively is that it's just taking whatever story you have and i guess making it and being able to show it because that alone is already so big for whatever culture you may be a part of so that's why like that's what that means for me like creatively but uh in terms of like personally wise I think of it as like legacy like um Mm -hmm. my family all the time is like if uh with their random quotes they're they're so um uh they're 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 very uh driven in the sense that no one will do it if you don't do it if not you who if not now when Mm -hmm. and like it's things like that where they're just like hey, you're doing this not just for you. So, like, even the fact yeah. that, like, I made something or even the fact that I got the job I got or got into the school I wanted to get into or, did, you know, anything I did, it was, like, it's not just for you. It's right. for the people that may follow you or even your sisters or even your mother, your father. It's, like, this is, like, excellence that you are putting forth for your family. So that's that's definitely what it means for me. Yes. That legacy piece, I, I love how you... Um you know, wove that into what it means to you. I think that is is so true. Um, Spencer, why is it important to you to bring diverse, bring underrepresented stories to the screen um, for you as a filmmaker? Oh my God. I, I mean, I feel so passionate about this topic. Um, I, I remember growing up because uh, I think a lot of stories out there are related to um, trauma experienced by people of color. Right, mm-hmm. hey, like, oh, yeah. everything about Asian people has to be about Asian trauma, every black story has to be about black trauma. But for me, growing up, I felt like a lot of my traumas and pains weren't exactly correlated to my identity. Like, I never felt growing up like, oh, I'm defined as being Asian American, I'm defined as being Spencer, but I just happen to be Asian American. Mm-hmm. And I felt that because of that, I wasn't even allowed to write about the Asian American experience which is the super backward feeling. But I think for me, I realized that the beautiful thing about, you know, just life in our society is that these stories are told 
like right now, like the Asian American experience, the black experience is being written by us because mm-hmm. we're living it right now. And I felt that for me, like when it comes to like Fight Night, right? Um, almost every character is a person of color, but the film is not about race. But I just wanted to show that, you know, just because, you know, the, despite what we look like, our skin colors, we experience the same things inside, right? Like, but it's not just, but like, why can't the main character be Filipino? Right? Like, why can't, you can't, I can't even be black, right? And, you know, as people, especially as American, we all kind of go through similar things. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, you, that's a, but in, at the same time, I am telling the Asian American experience because Asian Americans mm-hmm. go through this. And I hope an Asian American that, um, you know, had a similar experience to me can see that and be like, oh, wow, like someone else like me is going through this. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. It reminds me a lot of One Loves 10 Signs of a Healthy and Unhealthy Relationship and the way that we position that um, when we talk to folks who might have different identities. These are all behaviors that 100% of us experience, but the way that they show up in um, my relationships versus someone else's relationships versus the relationships that we see on screen in Fight Night and in Road Trip are very different. So it's important to, you know, acknowledge those nuances while also understanding that there is a universality to how we experience relationships. Um, and so I, I love how you both, you know, brought that up in different ways. So tell me what, what unique challenges do you think that, um, plus filmmakers of color face when bringing their stories to the screen you touched on this a little bit is there anything else that you would add to that what are your thoughts on um you know maybe doing that yourselves uh, would you mind going yeah sorry that's, that's actually a pretty like loaded question i guess but um yeah it's a it's an important question and i feel like for me it's uh a little bit, of, I'll just, I'll, I will repeat like a little bit of what I said, but um, because of like who we are, you know, me being Chinese American, Asian American, people expect a certain kind of story from me. Mm-hmm. Whereas like maybe that wasn't completely true to my experience. I feel like there's someone that could tell that better. But will that, ex- my unique experience be accepted? You know, because I feel like, um... Yeah, I know this is difficult. That's why I had to think about it. I'm sorry to yeah. throw you under. Take but your like, time. Man. Take your time. <laughs> and I, I do feel very, I feel like nowadays um, these uh, marginalized voices are being given a platform. So I, I feel very, very grateful for that. But um, it, it is a little challenging in the sense that, like, because of who I am, my stories essentially have to represent an entire people. Right, it's like the pressure of that, right, and if my story isn't like true to what how they feel, is they'll they can maybe invalidate my experiences as an Asian American. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it's it's a little it's a little difficult, but I mean, I can't even complain because it's I'm so grateful for the time that we live in. People are so accepting and welcoming to new voices. Yeah, yeah ab- absolutely. Sure. Like, absolutely. Um, again, so sorry to like, just like chuck you in. I just had to like really think about it. Cause I was like, I kind of got to think about what I'm going to say and how I'm going to say, it, cause I don't want to come off like, uh, I, I want to like be very clear, I guess in a way. Um, but like, um, I'm sorry. And I'm even trying to remember like the question overall of it because, <laughs> um, but like overall, um, exactly what Spencer said, like, it's hard to be a creative and create something and not it and have it not be like about your race weirdly enough mm-hmm. like even down to like humor like I, I write a lot of comedy stuff and like even there's jo- there's like jokes that are made at like the expense of just nobody but because I am black it's like ah that's it's because he's black that's funny to him and it's funny to all black people it's ha 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 but I'm like ah I don't like that's not that's that's not what that was meant to be yeah but um and it is really and it is really hard to like it's really hard to like make anything and not it be uh in uh, instant in your race or your, your background or anything you're from like there's it's so much to it but like i think it's important that like like marginalized groups are like 
going out and making things so that way it's normalized. Because even now, like my, like I'm, I'm in my twenties and I've been like making films since like 15. And I think my family is just now really accepting that like, this is what I want to do. So them not even seeing that as like a outlet, as a possible living or a possible thing to do. It's like, they're like, Oh, I guess you can do that. But then they always use the excuse. There's like always work at the post office. There's always uh, done elsewhere. It's just, we're trying to do it because you're black. And I'm like, well, there's other people doing it. And I swear there's going to be more people doing it. So I do think it's very important that like more marginalized groups are like creating if that makes sense not even just film just like everything mm -hmm. absolutely does spencer go ahead now, i had another point that i feel like um it's just like worth putting out there which is um i feel like sometimes minority creators are put into the spotlight and they're labeled as like oh this is the chinese filmmaker and this is mm. you know the black and like he's he's known for making black movies and then it's a uh, it's this thing where it's almost like there can only be one chinese film mm -hmm. there can only be one person does it, right and I, I i hope that it doesn't become this thing where we feel like, like it's a, comp a scarcity mm -hmm. you know like there can only be this amount of asian stories this amount of black stories this amount of mexican stories to like reach reach a quota but that's like my fear you know and I yeah, don't absolutely. want people from my community to look at it as a competition. Mm -hmm. I just want more stories to be made. Right. Absolutely. Sorry. Like, I don't, I don't know if you experienced this too, but like growing up, I always heard like people would be like, oh, you're trying to be a Spike Lee. And it's like, well, I'm just trying to make, I just want to make stuff. And like you all, because you always get compared to the one black director or the one black writer or the one black actor. It's like, you're always compared. Like, is like, I feel like that's like, I don't want to say the experience of like all, you know, people of color who are in the creative space, but like, that's definitely been mine. And I've definitely shared laughs with other directors who've been like, oh, absolutely. Like I even, I like, there's people I know who like, don't like Spike Lee. And they're like, no, I refuse to watch any of his films because I don't want to accidentally do something similar to whatever he's ever done. And they're uh -huh. like, that's like their personality. And it's like wild that like people, not even just like, people outside of these cultures but people within them too that are like telling each other oh you're trying to be a uh you know a, a spike lee and you're trying to do da 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 da, da. it's like i'm it's yeah. wild like it's crazy yes yes well it sounds like i so appreciate all of your insights to that question and it was a, a very loaded question um but you both had a, a lot of great points to share and i'm glad we spent some time there it sounds like there's there's a lot to balance when it comes to you know representing your identity with the world and sharing these stories um, and trying to navigate that during this this time, um, but I again am so glad that now these stories are part of One Love's um, library of content and that you know they get to be in classrooms all across the country to help start even more conversations there and and hopefully influence. Um, influence lots of people's relationships. I would love to hear as we think about influences, who are some of the folks that influenced your work, your style, um, when it comes to being filmmakers? Uh, I'll jump in. Um, I think one of the things that kind of influenced me when it comes to like film is kind of the stories I read. Um, I can't really think of a lot of movies that specifically influence, like, I guess my style, because that's always changing. Like, I'm s still finding my style now. But um, uh, I would definitely say, like, um, there was one there was one story of, of, like, this, like, South African god, like, Baba Du Bois or something like that. I can't even remember, like, yeah. his his thing. But, like, his, like, the story of him... I like truly want to be like this one day where he's his whole mm -hmm. purpose is like, I may not, I may not like, oh, I'm trying to remember it. I'm sorry. I'm trying not to butcher this. Um, where you he's like, oh, well, the debate overall, the story of it is uh, the like overall message of it is if I can, in, if I can like influence you in a way to make you do better for yourself, that mm -hmm. makes me do better. And if I can constantly influence other people like me, to want to make films that would be awesome 
like if I make something that makes somebody like want to do that, then that's awesome. And then yes. it goes with the same of like my style. Cause like my overall style is again, constantly changing, but I'm always kind of like wanting to do whatever it is I read or whatever it is I've heard, like music influences all of my shots. Like the, the, mm. like even like the hip hop, uh, I call it like a uh, hip hop, sad like sad hip-hop kind of influences like a lot of my shots because it's always very slow there's not a lot of speed in anything I've ever done so like definitely like like that influence to others and influence mm-hmm. to myself and music that's what influenced like me if that I hope that answered the question it I didn't does. Just start rambling <laughs> no no it definitely does and in thinking about how road trip Visually, you can still see that with the explanation that you're sharing um, those moments where it is much slower, where the music is really contributing to everything that's happening um, in that film. So nice to hear what some of that background and inspiration is. Um, Spencer, what about you? For some of your, for some of your inspirations. Um, what, what directors influenced me? Or what POC directors? What, what was it? Yeah, yeah. Just who, who influenced you? It could be POC filmmakers. It could be um you know anyone in your well, life um honestly i really love um i really love donald glover um he's like i saw him once in la too and i really want to say hi to him but he was walking with this <laughs> and he was what's up ram here's my inspiration <laughs> yeah um, i see that shout out Look. And, uh I remember I saw him in LA. And I really wanted to talk to him, but he was walking with his wife. I didn't want to bother the dude. But I've been I've been wa- listening to his music and watching his music videos since I was like in middle school. Mm-hmm. Um, just to see the way that he's kind of flowered into this, like he's just doing everything, like mm-hmm. TV music. Yeah. And I just love how um, for him, uh, one is that he just he just wants to try everything and i think that's so like he doesn't stop himself at one like one genre one art medium but also i really really just um he, he made it a very comfortable space for people like me where you know like it, he made it cool to be a nerd like to be like weird and like express yourself and have emotion and I remember like kind of growing up, there wasn't really a space for that. Like there wasn't like, you were weird, you were weird. Like it wasn't cool to be an artist. So he, he, he just, but he just stayed himself the entire way, right? And I just thought for me, like, I, I'm a big fan of the show Atlanta. Like I, I love that show to death. And the way that he just, um, he takes like real, real life experience that people go through and but he adds his own like kind of like supernatural really weird quirky twist and i don't know i i just i aspire to be done <laughs> to be honest i i love, I, I love that man yeah donald glover uh glover is really great um i like atlanta too and i think that what you talked about um uh, that theme of feeling emotions and not being afraid to show those is something that comes up i mean you both share comes up in both of your films um and navigating what it means to um be in male friendships to have the um confines of masculinity or quote-unquote masculinity come come through in those films and so to transition again you know tell me how what do you want this film to be in the world what impact do you want this to have as people use it to spark conversations about healthy and unhealthy relationships. Well, what, what a transition that was. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, for me personally, I, I guess like this film is written, I wrote this film thinking like, what did spe- like 16 year old Spencer need to see? Mm-hmm. You know, through all my pain, growing pains, and what I went through, um, I, I need, I think it would have been really just cool to see someone who looked like me and was from where I'm from, you know, in Sacramento, we're not like LA or New York or Chicago, like people who don't go on and typically do these crazy things. So to see someone like from my community, um, make something, I just want to inspire someone to, um, 
know that they can do whatever they want despite who they are. Like, you don't need industry connections. You don't need, um, you know, all these things. You just need yourself and, you know, have a passion for what you do. And I want someone mm-hmm. to just see, be, be like, damn, like, I want to make one of those. Yeah. You know, because I'm sure Isaiah can relate. He's, there's one film out there that he saw and he was like, damn, this made me want a movie. And I <laughs> also just make someone feel more seen. You know, of course, the film's mm-hmm. about showing up for your friends. And yes. uh, you know, I want someone to feel less alone. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that. Oh, mm-hmm. man. Um, I, had, I had to say something. Right there, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did your you 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 came today you did the job i like that i like that a lot um man um a, a lot of the same honestly like with um like with road trip like my whole thing is like to cry like I, i'm like in every group i'm in i'm always like dude cry like if you like you you feel something i'm like oh yeah you haven't had like, if someone's being rude, I'm like, when's the last time you've cried? Like, you're being mm-hmm. rude for no reason. And, like, cause I'm, I'm, like, I'm a film teacher outside of, like, you know, doing what I do. So, like, I work with kids and then spe- specifically boys where they're so machismo and they're, like, so, like, this mm-hmm. toxic masculinity they do every day. And I'm, like, it's, like, ah, like, I can tell your fit. Like, I have such an insight to, like, how they are as individuals for the fact that I was a 16 year old boy and Mm -hmm. I have been like sad and didn't really know how to like deal with it. So I would just kind of like shove it down until next thing you know, I'm getting in fights over a Twinkie over nothing. So it's so dumb. And it's like, my whole thing is like having that emotional security with your friends. Cause if you can't like, if you can't be emotionally vulnerable with the ones that you claim to love, then you're just you're in for a bad time like you're not yep. you're you're never going to have a real relationship and it shows that in everything like it shows that in like your romantic partners your friendships your mm-hmm. relationships with your family like even i'm like i'm at a point where i'm like doing this like self discovery where um even talking to like the men in my life like my grandfather i'm like yeah we have a cool relationship but I genuinely remember being scared to ever show any emotion around you. Like I, and it was like wild. And like, I, I think about this so often to the fact that like, I over, like not over express my emotions, but like whenever I see my brothers or whenever I see like, uh, like kids in the class, I'm like, Hey, you're doing a great job. Like, you know, I'm really proud that you're here. Uh, Mm -hmm. And even to my brothers, I'm like, dude, you know, I love you. And I'm like, I'm like, look me in my eye. Like, I love you. Like, yeah. if you were to go, I would be genuinely sad. And then, like, when they're sad, I'm like, hey, talk about it. If you don't got to talk to me about it, just talk about it. Because you're going right. to be 16 and you're going to be fighting people over dumb stuff. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah. So, like, my whole thing is just, like, <laughs> like cry. Like, I, I really wish it was more. I really wish I had, like, better uh, words. Or I wish I was more poetic. But, like, no, cry. <laughs> that's a that's a message that's a perfect message you have a one word message but what you're but what you're saying and what i'm hearing that relates to what one love talks about and what we teach is that it's so important to actually have discussions with your friends to know how do you help a friend when they might be experiencing something unhealthy how do you help them through those situations and crying is such a big way that someone can work through their emotions in a healthy way um so it's incredibly poetic Spencer, did you have something to add to that? Yeah. Oh, no. I just want to say, like, that was, that was beautiful. I, I totally understand, you know, the, the feel, especially when you said the feeling of, like, maybe talking to someone in your family and being like, I'm afraid to, like, talk about my feelings around you. Like, why is that? Like, it, and how the other relationships, how we can't, a lot of people have trouble, like, expressing themselves in healthy ways in relationships. And I think it all starts from, like, you know, youth. And that's why it's so important that, you know, films like ours are being made and showing yeah. people. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was great. Yes, I agree. Um, and as we start to wrap up our time together, is there anything else that you want to add about your film, about this experience that comes to mind for you, um, what you hope it will do in the world? Um, well, the education portion is immensely grateful. Like no matter what happens with um, anything I make from here on out, I can definitely take this and do 
I, f- I feel like the next thing I make is going to be awesome for the sake that how much I learned on this. So yeah. uh, education and boys cry, like cry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm writing that down and putting it on my brother's uh, doors. Boys cry. cry. Listen, boys cry. Watch, watch Fight Night, watch Road Trip. <laughs> cry, cry more. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, the original um, title of Fight Night was actually Boys, Boys, Boys Don't Cry. That was the title of it. I think I. No, no. I'm, I was about to say. I think I remember that being the top of yours when I, because I, I've read your uh, script, but I don't. I don't know. Never mind. I. Yeah. Just... Yeah. I, I I just wanted to put that out. Um, kind of like what I just said. Like, I am so grateful for this experience. For a plethora of what it is. You know, I like the yeah, Like. I, I genuinely believe the next thing that we make is incredible because I mean, both experiences uh, like that I had ever made was like for free to like I think the biggest budget I ever worked on was like five hundred dollars, and then the jump from that to what we were entrusted with was um, crazy. Because I just you know that someone had belief in me as to give me this, these kind of resources. It literally was a dream come true. I couldn't have never imagined that for myself. And I am just like bummed for the experience because I met some amazing, incredible people that will keep, I'll keep in my life, you know, past. I learned so much about myself as not just a filmmaker, but as a person. Mm-hmm. Um, here's, out through the making of the film, like Isaiah said, where I, I was like, damn, like I, I, I was given this opportunity and I fumbled the bag. Like, I, I, I and like, yo, excuse my language, but I, I, um, I just felt like, man, like if I, I messed up here, what else, what else am, am I, am I even capable of doing this? But I remember, um, thinking myself in that moment when things were going wrong that you don't really fail until you give up. Mm-hmm. Like nothing great ever happens in one day. It was never an easy road, and these are all life lessons that I don't think I would have had unless it was for this fellowship and this opportunity to make this film, and for it to come out the way that it did. And I, I'm just really happy and at peace with where it is today. Mm-hmm. I, I very I'm, that's a very rare experience for a creator where they have something they're like, wow, something that. I wouldn't change. Like this is how it is, and um, I'm just so grateful for that. And uh, you know, whatever happens, happens from this point on. But I just know that my life has forever changed because of this opportunity. So I just want to say thank you for everyone that helped make it happen, for the people that will watch it, and thank you, you know, just to everyone. And um, yeah, I don't know. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Spencer. And thank you, Isaiah. I can say that despite how you all were feeling and despite maybe you're struggling through some of those moments where it felt like things were going downhill, that everyone at One Love had 100% faith in y'all and that you were chosen very specifically for this opportunity. Um, And that what you created really is just an, an incredible Um, they're incredible films and they're incredible assets to starting conversations about healthy and unhealthy relationships. So a huge, huge uh, gratitude back to both of you all for being part of this fellowship and to the Allstate Foundation, you know, for making it happen. Um, And we are right at 45 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up Um, to everyone who is joining or to his, to Um, Those who are watching this later, voting is open for these films um, from now until the end of February. You can go to joinonelove.org slash vote um, and make sure that you tag um, hashtag onelovefilmfest as you share these trailers and films about the fellowship and festival to social media you will be entered to win some amazing one love prizes uh, throughout the month if you tag again hashtag one love film fest you can also tag at join one love Um, the more shares from our website the more entries you can vote once per day and um, again thank you so much to isaiah and to spencer for joining 
and for being part of this fellowship. You both rock. Oh, thank you. All right, y'all. Okay. Thank care. you so thank you so much. You guys have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye.